The news at noon starts right now. New at noon, the state of Texas allowing some businesses to reopen under certain restrictions in an effort to get things back to normal. That effort starting today. The governor this week announced that restaurants, movie theaters, and most retailers could reopen with 25% capacity. While some argue that we need more, Texas Senator John Cornyn tells KSAT he agrees with the move. We can't stay hunkered down in our homes forever. Uh, people, many people, unfortunately, are without a paycheck and they need to be able to provide for their families by earning, earning a wage. So I think uh, trying to do this gradually and do this with appropriate safeguards in place is the right thing to do. Cornyn says getting confidence back is important. Congress returns to session next week. And coming up in a few minutes, we'll break down what you can and can't do today. Also new this noon, a man needs a place to stay after a fire broke out at his home on the northwest side. The man was there at the time, but he was outside watering his lawn. That's when he noticed the smoke. Crews tell us that that fire may have started in an AC unit in the attic. The fire caused about $50,000 worth of damage. Police are looking for the person responsible for a hit and run crash on the south side late last night. The crash happened on Tabor and West Bircham Avenue, according to police. The victim said the suspect ran through a stop sign and crashed into her car. The victim's car hit a curb and then rolled over onto its roof, and that's when the suspect got out of the car and ran away without checking on the victim or providing any information. The victim was taken to the hospital with minor injuries, and police say when arrested, the suspect will face charges of failure to stop and render aid. A San Antonio man opens his front door only to find a gun pointed at him. Now police and crime stoppers are looking for that person and a second suspect. According to police, two men rang a doorbell at a home on Coyote Hollow. That's near Tally Road on the far northwest side. It happened on February 9th. The victim says a suspect pointed a gun at him, shouted for him to get on the ground. The victim quickly closed and locked the door, though, and went to call 911 instead. As he did that, he heard two gunshots. Police say two suspects drove off in a newer model silver Mercedes. If you have any information, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Authorities have released the photo of a suspect who they say was involved in the theft of several rifles that were stolen from a portable building belonging to Southside ISD. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says Ernesto Marroquin was taken into custody back on April 9th and charged with felony burglary. Court records show that he was released a day later after posting bond. BCSO says those rifles were stolen late last month after several suspects appeared to break in through a back window at Southside ISD's Her Heritage Elementary School. A BCSO spokeswoman says the investigation is ongoing and Southside ISD officials have not said why the rifles were stored in a portable building in the first place. COVID-19 cases are up 48 cases in Bear County. That brings the total number up to 1,374. This comes as Texas continues the first phase of the governor's plan to reopen the Texas economy. Meanwhile, the city of San Antonio voted yesterday to approve new stay home work safe orders. So what do these seemingly contradictory actions mean for us? RJ Marquez explains the situation. <laughs> Governor Greg Abbott's executive stay-at-home order expired last night, allowing some businesses to reopen today with limited capacity. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf have revised local stay-at-home work safe orders to stay consistent with the state. Both local and state orders are in effect through May 19th. In Bear County, gatherings are still prohibited beyond your household, and social distancing is still required in shared outdoor spaces and inside stores. People who violate the rules risk facing fines and possible jail time. Local residents must also continue wearing face coverings in places where social distancing is difficult, like in grocery stores or pharmacies. But this is the major difference from the state's order, which supersedes local orders. The state says residents cannot be arrested or fined for not wearing face coverings, but privately owned businesses can ask customers to leave if they are not wearing a mask. When it comes to reopening businesses, Abbott says all Texas retail stores, restaurants, movie theaters, and malls are allowed to open Friday as long as they operate at 25% occupancy and follow social distancing guidelines. Gyms, bars, barbershops, nail salons, and public swimming pools all have to stay closed for now. Dentists and other licensed healthcare professionals can resume services, 
Museums and libraries can reopen, but interactive exhibits have to stay closed. Abbott also says churches could expand occupancy and that sports like tennis or golf can resume as long as there are not more than four people playing together. This does not mean that businesses have to reopen and some have already said they do not plan on doing so immediately. There are also concerns from local health officials that Governor Abbott's plan to reopen Texas is premature for San Antonio. There are places in Texas that have hardly seen any cases where the population density is very low. And I think resuming business is probably a very good idea and important for those places. San Antonio is different. We have a higher population density and we're worried that this may be early. Despite these concerns, the state is moving ahead with the first phase. The second phase would begin in mid-May if the state is able to maintain healthcare capacity and limit the spread or new flare-up of COVID-19. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch Case at News at 9, Monday through Friday. And starting Monday, bibliotech branches will reopen. Those are Bear County's digital libraries. It will run during regular business hours from 9 to 5. All visitors and staff must wear a face covering, and everyone will have their temperature checked before entering the branch. Bibliotech says it will allow people to use computers, print up to 10 pages for free, scan or fax documents, and check out tablets or Wi-Fi hotspots. A lot of organizations are struggling amid the pandemic, and that includes nonprofit art agencies. Here's your chance to help. There are now uh, features on the San Antonio San City of San Antonio's Department of Arts and Culture website that allow you to donate to 37 local nonprofits. The department says we have all relied on the arts to help us get through hard times, and now it's time to support them during their hard time. If you donate at least $20, the city is going to send you a 2020 Fiesta Medal as well. You can find more information right now on ksat.com. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, oh my. my. <laughs> it's just some of what you can experience at the San Antonio Zoo's drive through zoo. Our Alicia Barrera gives us a look. Though they're not in school due to the coronavirus restrictions, seniors at Warren High School decided to announce their choices in a unique way. We're going to take a listen after the break. Today is National Decision Day. It's the day most high school seniors confirm where they'll go to college in the fall. Some local students celebrated with a parade. This morning, students lined up their cars at Warren High School, and then the cars paraded past the school where administrators, counselors, and teachers congratulated the students with noisemakers and cowbells. Students also got the chance to stop, get out of their cars, and shout out their military choices or their college choices. Some parents came up with the idea for the parade. It was a way for students to celebrate their accomplishments while practicing social distancing and see each other for the first time many in over a month. We decided to put on a little parade so they can announce to their admin and to their counselors the school they'll be attending in the fall. As the parade snaked its way along, administrators, counselors, and senior teachers stood by to congratulate the students. Meantime, staff at Brookdale North Fredericksburg Senior Living Facility held a Fiesta Love Parade this morning. It was an effort to make the residents there feel loved and supported during these stressful times. Participants were encouraged to decorate the cars for the event. Some staff at Brookdale say they wanted to show how much they care for the community. It's amazing to see the joy brought to a resident's face after they have had things, you know, just taken away for a little while. Some staff say this was a small way they could show their love and care for the community, but the residents reaction made it all worth it. All right, it is 12 11 and a beautiful 82 degrees outside. It feels really great. Justin. Is this is this our last really comfortable <laughs> feeling day? Yeah, I'd say so. Pretty much. Yeah, the humidity is going to be coming back tonight. We're going to see more humidity tomorrow and temperatures are going to be on their way up. But it feels good out there right now. We had another good morning. Uh, the aquifer is dropping pretty quickly now. It's down 9 tenths of a foot to 665.6. .6. In your pollen count, moderate counts of mold. It's at 960 low counts of grass. Yes, there are warmer temperatures, but we may get some relief next week, too. We're going to talk about that forecast coming up. Texas Folk Life is hosting the 14th annual Big Squeeze today, and this year you can watch the concert from home. 
The afternoon's event began back in February. It drew dozens of talented young musicians from all across the state. Contestants entered the contest through live competitions and recorded their submissions. You can watch it on Facebook Live today from 3 to 4 by visiting the Big Squeeze Finals Facebook. Three grand champions are going to be announced during the online event. Each of the winners will receive a prize package and future performance opportunities with Texas Folklife. Driving around, you may see bears, a rainforest, tigers, and more. That's if you're cruising through the San Antonio Zoo. For the foreseeable future, guests will be able to drive through the zoo for this once-in-a-lifetime experience. Now, tickets for this weekend already sold out, but new dates have been added. Alicia Barrera visited the zoo for more on this four-wheel tour and tells us why those ticket sales are so crucial for the organization. While you've been quarantined at home, the animals of the San Antonio Zoo have kept doing what they do best, Orphans. sleeping, playing and eating. But others have noticed the absence of friendly faces eager to get their attention. They miss people and the Gibbons are so excited when they see new people and new faces come up to their habitat that they get a little bit excited and they want to show off. And although you can't walk up to the exhibits, you can now drive through the zoo. This is a very unique experience because we haven't let people do this since we've had donkey carts and trains in the zoos and it's been a long time. This is just something that someone threw out one day and we said, hey, we could probably do that. We have um, drive lanes in the park that our staff drives on in the mornings and things like that. So what if we um, let guests drive through and, you know, they're safe, they're secure in their car. And a map and audio tour found on the zoo's website will guide you down familiar pathways to learn about the history of the San Antonio Zoo and see furry friends like bears, monkeys, or even hear the roar of the lions. So we sold out within the first three hours that we announced it on social media. Because of that demand, we added more dates. They've added hours and hopefully we'll add more staff. The overwhelming response from the public has been huge and uh, it's allowed us to bring furloughed employees back. According to Tim Morrow, CEO of the San Antonio Zoo, like many businesses, they've taken a big cut due to the coronavirus pandemic. About $500,000 a week to operate the zoo and we 100% depend on ticket sales and guest visitation and donations of grants. The zoo has increased admission to $60 per vehicle for non-annual pass holders beginning May 4th through May 17th. Pass holders will still be able to experience the drive through zoo at 30 $32 per car. All money spent on ticket sales and curbside food options goes towards taking care of all the animals at the San Antonio Zoo, as well as helping the employees who have been able to come back to work due to this drive through option here at the zoo. And all ticket sales are online and tickets are selling fast. Reporting from the San Antonio Zoo, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. What a great idea. I think so. Yeah, it brings me back to childhood. Reminds me of a safari, too. Yeah, yeah, one of those safari drive throughs We now have one yep. here in San Antonio. And uh, great weather for it today. Oh, yeah, yeah. A great day to roll down the windows, be outside. I mean, it will get a little hot this afternoon, but uh, all in all, pretty good day. Let's take a look at some severe weather stats, guys. So we're moving into the peak of severe weather season. So far this year, we've had 554 reports in Texas, 64 tornadoes, 231 hail reports, 259 wind reports. It's been fairly busy, but on par with what we were looking at last year for the most part. And as uh, we look across the rest of the nation, uh, there's been 5,625 reports. Alabama leads the way with severe weather reports. 563 Texas is in second. Georgia comes in third. We've still got a month or so here to deal with perhaps some uh, stronger spring like storms. We'll see how that plays out. The, this week, though, looks pretty quiet, really, in general. And as we look at the current temperatures, it, it kind of tells the weather story here. Because we got a ridge of high pressure down to our south and west. It's kept things very warm across the desert southwest. But really, we're moving into more what we call a zonal pattern. Everything just kind of moves west to east. And there's no big storm system to get any big amounts of rain going or any good rain chances down here in south Texas. So things look pretty quiet until we get into next week. And even then, our rain chances are pretty low. There's a frontal battery that, are, that will head our way. I'll show you that in just a second. Outside right now. 82 degrees, just a few thin high clouds out there. 52 degrees, or 52 degrees, the dew point. South southeast chilly winds at about 13 miles per hour. Winds are going to be a little bit breezy today out of the south and southeast. And looking at the uh, satellite picture, you can see some of those thin high clouds coming in from the north and west. Temperatures have jumped into the 80s now after what was a pretty cool start this morning. 82 at Port SA, 85 in Castroville, one of the warmer spots, up to uh, 87 in Del Rio and 80s across our eastern counties as well. There's a look at the wind gusts pretty consistently right around 20 miles per hour. So winds are going to be right in that range 
uh, through this afternoon and this evening. And uh, you can see that they will eventually drop off overnight. But it's through this period, those southeasterly winds, that, that it starts to bring in that Gulf moisture. And I think you'll probably start to notice it more so tomorrow morning. We may start off with some morning clouds. H high temperatures today, right around 90 here in San Antonio. As you get out west, that's where the temperatures really ramp up. There will be some triple digits out there today. And again, tomorrow, this is tomorrow at 5 o'clock, triple digits out west. And we go even warmer here in San Antonio. We're thinking 93 for a high on your Saturday. As far as clouds go, we'll see some morning clouds building briefly tomorrow and then, get, then again on Sunday. And I, I think it's probably more widespread on Sunday, uh, but both afternoons we'll be looking at mostly sunny skies. So 90 degrees uh, today, southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, and then 93 tomorrow, 94 Sunday, 96 Monday and Tuesday. Those are probably our warmest days. Now Tuesday evening, there's an outside chance of a storm, probably off to our north as our frontal boundary slowly starts to make its way in. And that may kick up a, a few showers and storms on Wednesday too, but our rain chances really are pretty low. The good news here is that that frontal boundary should cool us down into the 80s for highs by the time we get around to Wednesday and Thursday, guys. That looks a little bit more comfortable for bit. sure. Thank you. All right, and uh, speaking of comfort and waking up <laughs> this morning, coffee. And Spurs. <laughs> yes, Spurs Coffee Gang, organized by Patty Mills, and it's a way for some of the Spurs to stay connected, current Spurs and past Spurs, and it's also a way to entertain the fans. Coming up, we have the latest edition of the Spurs Coffee Gang. This one's got Patty, Bobo, Manu, and Tiago, and it's a good one. Plus, will the Spurs open up their practice facility next Friday? Coming up. Me being 40, um, Bobo being 40 pounds overweight. <laughs> uh, we... <laughs> ah, Manu, cracking jokes during the Spurs' latest edition of the Coffee Good Gang morning, and Big everyone, Board Sports. Today is May 1st, the date NBA Commissioner Adam Silver said as the day he would reevaluate what happens next with the NBA. It's been seven plus weeks now since the league was put in a timeout due to the coronavirus. The NBA wants to resume the season, but doing so while keeping everyone safe certainly is no easy task. Meanwhile, the league has given a green light for team facilities to reopen one week from today, which helps the Spurs amid Governor Greg Abbott's lifting some restrictions. So Spurs CEO R.C. Buford was asked, will the Spurs open their practice facility on May 8th. We're going to make that decision as we get more information, as we have more data around our own local environment, as well as the national environment. We're not putting any dates on it. It's going to be more how we get the information that we need to be comfortable to provide the right atmosphere for our players. RC would not comment on if any players, coaches, or staff members had tested positive for coronavirus. Now, Buford said the NBA and the Spurs have every intention to return to play and to create the best environment they can for the league and the fans. Buford was asked where the Spurs are right now, in town or out, and how are they monitoring them when it comes to health? We're having uh, systematically uh, timed calls with everybody or virtual meetings with everybody. Most of our group is in, in market. And I think we've been really fortunate that, that uh, a big percentage of our group has been in market. Um, we've had virtual workouts. We've had virtual rehabilitation sessions. So guys who are fighting through injuries are doing virtual uh, rehabilitations. We've had coaching and video sessions. And, and so I think there's uh, when we're not all together, I think they've done a good job of, of staying connected. RC jokingly said getting Coach Pop on a virtual call has been their biggest challenge. Now the Spurs coffee gang is back delivering smiles and laughs and we sure can use both these days. Patty Mills, Boris Diaw, Manu Ginobili and Tiago Splitter cutting it up. Here's part of their conversation talking about nicknames. The one that you popularized and you made famous was uh, Gramps. I started being Gramps at 36, I think, when you came to <laughs> when you came to the Spurs. Uh, I was a Gramps for all the, the last four years, and then you started with the Grandpa Juice thing, and it blew out. Bobo has, has a, a verb; it's a different thing. Oh, yes. When you can, yes, your yes. your la your nickname becomes a verb. It's big time. You you explain, buddy, that one. 
you know, when you are bubbling, it means you are daydreaming, you're thinking about a million other things, possibly All your business. other than the moment, and uh, you're kind of off in the fairyland kind of thing. <laughs> bubbling. I love like it. I will use this. Yes. Love grandpa juices. Well, gosh, I miss those guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Larry. You got it. All right. Well, restaurants are starting to open with 25% capacity, but HEB is still offering meals from local businesses. We'll have some of those restaurants ahead on KSAT 12 News at noon. Former Vice President Joe Biden speaking out today. In the next half hour, what he has to say about the sexual assault allegation against him. New today at five, despite a decrease in car sales nationally, we'll tell you how one local dealership owner says being labeled essential saved his business. That's today at five after entertainment tonight. Welcome back. More than a dozen states are lifting stay at home restrictions in some capacity today. But the coronavirus pandemic is still taking a major toll all around the country. Here's ABC News' Zachary Keish with how some states are moving forward. Despite confirmed positive cases in the U.S. creeping towards 1.1 million, according to Johns Hopkins, several state governments have elected to relax stay-at-home restrictions. Most are taking a phased approach with broad variations depending on location. In Texas, dine-in restaurants, movie theaters, all retail stores and shopping malls got the green light to open and operate at 25 percent capacity. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, who was initially praised but then criticized by President Trump for ending stay-at-home orders today, is cautioning his citizens. I'm urging Georgians to continue to stay home whenever possible. Illinois isn't expected to hit its COVID-19 apex for another two weeks, but it's lifting restrictions on golf courses, state parks, and modified opening of retail stores. It feels like a huge relief coming. Um, it's definitely been challenging to be closed all of these weeks, and we miss our customers. Our Alex Perez with paramedics in Chicago. Okay, we haven't hit the peak, but they're starting to open things up. Because you're like, well, we're going to suffer longer. The patients are going to suffer longer. On the other side, protests for better working conditions, sick leave, and compensation during the pandemic. Today, May Day, employees from some of the nation's busiest companies, including Amazon, Target, Instacart, planning to walk out. Demands differ, but all want healthier working conditions. According to a new ABC News Ipsops poll, while 77% of Americans say they would return to work the day after emergency orders were lifted, only 44% said they'd eat at a restaurant and just 29% say they'd go to a gym or health club. As the national death toll climbs beyond 63,000, researchers at the University of Maryland say that cell phone data suggests that many Americans have already begun to move around despite government orders. Zachary Keish. ABC News, New York. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi doing her best this morning to help workers on the front lines of the coronavirus. As part of the next relief package, state and local governments are currently seeking a sum of up to $1 trillion. Pelosi says the money would help nurses, bus drivers, and other essential employees. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said he's open to additional funding to states, but any new bill must include liability protections from an avalanche of lawsuits against businesses that do reopen. Meanwhile, essential workers nationwide plan to strike and or rally on May Day, demanding safer conditions during the pandemic. Despite tight stay at home orders, organizers with Amazon, Whole Foods, Target and FedEx plan to walk off of their jobs or call out sick. The workers are demanding unpaid time off work, hazard pay, sick leave, protective gear and cleaning supplies. In addition, protesters will take to the streets and cities nationwide to demand states loosen shelter in place rules and reopen. Former Vice President Joe Biden speaking out for the very first time on an allegation of sexual assault made against him. That claim coming from a former female staffer who says she was assaulted by Biden when she worked briefly in his Senate office back in 1993. ABC's Alex Preche has more on Biden's response to the allegation. Did you sexually assault Tara Reid? No, it is not true. I'm saying unequivocally, it never, never happened. 
former Vice President Joe Biden addressing an allegation of sexual assault directly for the first time on MSNBC. I'm confident there's nothing. No one ever brought it to the attention of me 27 years ago. This is any assertion at all. No one that I'm aware of in my campaign, at, excuse me, my, my Senate office at the time, is aware of any such uh, request and uh, uh, or any such complaint. The accusation comes from Biden's former staff assistant, Tara Reid, who served in his Washington Senate office briefly in 1993. Reid was 29 at the time. She claims aides told her to bring Biden his gym bag, that she found him in a corridor of a Senate office building. And in interviews with Democracy Now! and others, she says this happened next. I was up against the wall, and I remember his hands underneath my blouse and underneath my skirt and his fingers penetrating me as he was kissed, trying to kiss me and I was pulling away. Reed tells ABC that at the time she complained to the Senate personnel office that Biden had made her feel uncomfortable, but she says she did not mention an assault and she does not possess a record of the complaint. Reed says she shared similar concerns with other staffers in Biden's office shortly after the alleged incident. All three of those staffers tell ABC News that's not true. And if that document existed, it would be stored in the National Archives where documents from the office she claims to have filed her complaint with are stored. So I'm asking the Secretary of the Senate today to identify whether any such document exists. If it does, make it public. This isn't the first time Reid has publicly accused Biden. Last year, when Biden came under fire for what some women felt was inappropriate contact, Reid came forward saying Biden touched her on the shoulder and neck in a way that was uncomfortable. There's so many inconsistencies in what has been said in this case. Reid describes herself as a hardcore Democrat, but her story has now been taken up and heavily promoted by President Trump's campaign, his son Donald Trump Jr. and conservative media. President Trump was asked about it yesterday. You know, it's uh, it could be false accusations. I know all about false accusations. More than a dozen women have accused President Trump of sexual misconduct or assault, including rape. The president says they're all lying. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. It is beautiful outside, but it's going to get hotter. Yeah, it, well, we're into May now, so we would expect those temperatures to jump up, but they're going to get awful hot next week, guys. We're talking about mid to even upper 90s in some cases. This morning, though, gorgeous. We had another great morning. It wasn't as cold as yesterday morning, but we had a great sunrise. Check it out on our KSAC Connect. It's sent in by Ronnie out of Bulverde. The beginning of a beautiful day. I agree. It's Friday and we're heading into the weekend with some pretty good weather today. There's a look at the lows this morning. 59 degrees here in San Antonio, 56 in Kerrville, 55 in Uvalde, 61 in Rock Springs. I hate to say it, but this is probably one of the last mornings where we'll see temperatures like this, and that's because that humidity is going to be really increasing and we're going to see temperatures uh, warming up, especially during the morning hours. Warm, low humidity today, but morning clouds and a little more sticky tomorrow as those dew points start to climb. And then next week, it'll be hot to start at least Monday and Tuesday, but we'll get a frontal boundary by Wednesday. That'll help us out. That'll cool us down some. Forecast by for today, 90 degrees by 5 o'clock, 85, 7 o'clock, 75, 10 o'clock. Winds will be breezy out of the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Well, right now on KSAT.com, today is the last day you can help animals in need during the coronavirus pandemic. The Animal Defense League, like a lot of nonprofits, unable to have their annual fundraiser. Because of that cancellation, ADL is in dire need of donations. As a way to help, KSAC community and the Animal Defense League of Texas is teaming up to make a fundraising challenge through Facebook. Even though today's the last day of the challenge, it's not too late to donate. All donations are going to go toward food for dogs and cats, vaccinations for pet rescues, and one month of flea and tick prevention. For more information, just go to KSAT.com and click on the KSAT Community section under the Features tab. And KSAT Community is partnering with United Way of San Antonio and Bear County in the community-wide Thankathon virtual campaign. Now it's for people who want to thank those on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic, from healthcare professionals, first responders to teachers, grocery and food service workers, even small business employees. Let's thank them all. To participate, just go over to KSAT.com and click on KSAT Community under the Features tab. Plus, Whole Foods making sure its shoppers are safe from COVID-19, what customers are getting for free over the next few days. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV.
HEB is still offering meals from local restaurants at a variety of San Antonio stores as restaurants begin to operate their dining rooms at 25% capacity. Meals from Tre Tatoria, Two Bros, La Gloria, among others, are being sold at HEB locations as an effort to help the local businesses in the area during the coronavirus pandemic. All proceeds from the sales are going directly back to the local restaurants. For a full list of the meals and the locations, they're all available on ksat.com. And if you frequent Whole Foods Market, well, make sure you bring a mask. But if you do forget to, don't sweat it. The grocery giant will be offering free disposable masks to customers nationwide within the next few days. They also have enhanced cleaning at all of their locations and open an hour earlier for elderly customers. As scientists continue to learn more about coronavirus, the growing amount of evidence suggests that a significant number of people infected with the virus will experience little to no symptoms. That means that they could be spreading the virus without ever noting it. Here's more on that with Inez Delicatera. It's typically thought that if you are infected with a virus like COVID-19, you will exhibit symptoms which alert you and the people around you to avoid close contact in order to prevent further spreading the virus. But many people who get infected with COVID-19 might never know because they will not exhibit any of the symptoms. In fact, research published in the Journal of the American Medical Association shows people can contract COVID-19 but not show symptoms for three days, a week, or even three weeks. It's unpredictable. In those days to weeks, the virus is spreading throughout your body, and during that time, you could be unknowingly passing along the virus to others. And what about those people who have it but never suffer with anything, not even something as minor as a little chill at night? Studies show this can happen, too, but it's challenging to identify those who are totally asymptomatic, especially because they may never get tested. With this Medical Minute, I'm Inez de la Quatera, ABC News. Live look outside with live cam. We are enjoying uh, the last few hours of yes. low humidity. <laughs> Soak it all in while we can. Well, you know, these fronts are going to become uh, fewer. We're going to see fewer of them as we go forward in time. That's just the reality of it, right, as we get into May and June. But they've been nice so far. They've dropped the humidity for us, and now we're starting to see the humidity come back a little bit. So far today, 82 degrees, the low this morning, 58. So that's a little bit below average. That's nice, but I think we'll be above average later today. The records are 99 and 44 set back in 1929 and 1903. Could we see a little bit of rain next week? Eh, there's a chance. We're going to talk about it coming up. Welcome back. We finished out April well with not much rain. So obviously we're into May now. We don't have any rainfall yet, but we're hoping to get some. We are going to be a little bit below average. We were coming out of April a little bit below average. Since January 1st, we're at 7.35. This is at San Antonio International, by the way, and we're about three quarters of an inch now below average. Boy, we could use some rain, and it's just seeming becoming to, in the forecast. It's seeming to become more and more sparse. I do want to pass along, though, that the uh, ozone action day is in place today. We're going to have some higher levels of ozone, so uh, folks with asthma, uh, it may give you a little bit of trouble. We always like to pass that along. Meantime, our, our time lapse is just not there. Uh, I don't know what's going on there, uh, but what I can tell you, it's 82 degrees outside. Dew point is at 52 south southeasterly winds at about 13 miles per hour. Just imagine it, though. There was a beautiful sunrise this morning. I promise you it was there. Uh, it was really gorgeous. We had some of these thin cirrus clouds coming through and it made for some nice colors. We'll see that uh, maybe in some capacity again tomorrow, although I think we're going to have a little bit more low cloudiness tomorrow morning. Uh, right now, temperatures 82 degrees at the airport, 87 Castroville, 79 Bernie Stage, 83 right now in Hondo, 79 Rock Springs, 87 right now in Del Rio, and 90 in Creaso Springs, one of the hot spots right now. Wind gusts starting to pick up some. We've seen gusts right around 20 miles per hour. I mean, that's been pretty consistent here around South Texas. And with that southeasterly wind, as you might imagine, uh, dew points are going to be increasing. And here's what we're looking at right now. feels good outside. Dew points are in the 40s. Uh, but we see those dew points increase to the 60s, mid 60s tomorrow morning. So you'll feel it. And then tomorrow afternoon, they'll drop off a little bit. But by Sunday, here we go again. And these numbers will be even higher, probably in the upper 60s, close to 70. And that puts us almost in the oppressive range. So yes, the humidity does come back. It would be nice if it would lead to some rain chances, but there's not a whole lot there. 
And one reason for that, as we look across the country, is we're moving into what's more of what's called a zonal pattern. Everything just moves west to east. There's just no big storm system there to gather uh, showers or develop uh, showers and storms and get us some rainfall down here in Texas. So things remain pretty quiet for a lot of the country. And as we look at the future cast, clouds will develop tomorrow morning. They'll be brief. Sunday morning, we'll see them again. They may be a little bit more widespread on Sunday morning. But both days, we'll eventually get some sun in the afternoon. In fact, we'll probably go mostly sunny. 90 degrees today, southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour and gusty. And then tomorrow, 93, 94 on Sunday, 96 on Monday and Tuesday. Those are going to be two of our warmer days. And then on Tuesday, there is an outside chance for shower late. And it's a small chance, and it'll be mainly north of San Antonio. It depends on what this front does. We think a frontal boundary will move in early Wednesday morning. If it can get close enough Tuesday evening, we'll get some showers and storms to develop and maybe they'll linger around on Wednesday. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that. But one thing we do know is that it should cool down some 84 degrees on Wednesday, 84 on Thursday. So some improvement there and maybe some lower humidity. But in the meantime, it's back to what we would typically expect here in South Texas in May, hot and humid. Here comes summer. Thank you so much, Justin. All right, Larry, what's this about Will Ferrell crashing a Zoom meeting? Yes, so <laughs> Will Ferrell crashed the Seattle Seahawks Zoom meeting yesterday. Of course, he went to Southern Cal. Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll used to coach at Southern Cal, so they know each other. They're friends. They're both joker, jokesters. So Will Ferrell was impersonating tight end Greg Olson. It's pure comedy. And Texans wide receiver Brandon Cook says he feels no pressure. Coming up. Greg Olson. Greg, could you come in and tell the fellas what you're all about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Coach, thanks so much. So excited to be here. Uh, Will Farrell crashed the Seattle Seahawks Zoom meeting, and it was hilarious in big board sports. USL has extended its temporary suspension of the 2020 championship and League One seasons. The previous suspension ran through May 10th, but with that timeline no longer tenable, the USL will wait for their guidance and clarity from local, state, and national health authorities before announcing a new earliest return to play date. However, USL is also exploring scenarios that would allow for players to return to training facilities to conduct individual or small group work prior to May 15th. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Wide receiver Brandon Cooks is entering his seventh NFL season, and the Texans are his fourth NFL team. Some would view that as a negative, but not Cook saying it's a positive because he's wanted and he's still valued at a high level. He's played for the Patriots, the Saints, Rams, and now he's ready to catch passes from Deshaun Watson. During a video conference call, Cooks was asked how much pressure does it put on him to be the guy to come and replace wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. First and foremost, um, I think, you know, just being brought in in general, as far as specifics, you know, of being brought in for a guy like DeAndre Hopkins or anything like that, I don't, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that. You talk about a great player that's uh, played a lot of uh, great football in his years as a Texan, you know, I, just looking at it from a standpoint to just coming in uh, to help the team win as best as I can. Um, so that's the way that I look at it. Seattle held a team meeting yesterday via Zoom. Head coach Pete Carroll, a noted jokester, wanted to introduce some of the incoming Seahawks to their new teammates. This is where comedian actor Will Ferrell comes in, impersonating tight end Greg Olson, who recently signed a one-year deal with the Seahawks. You know, excited to play with you, Russ. Russ, I love you. I mean, I love you. I love the way you play. I love the way you handle yourself as a human being. Uh, you too, Greg. I mean, I love you. Let's make a baby, you know? Um, <laughs> Step brothers. Out there, let's make a baby. Um, you know, what I did mostly for Carolina is I drew up all my own plays. So I'm going to be adding a lot to the playbook. Um, this one I just drew up, it's called 90 Go Flywheel Kanye Starburst. Um, and uh, so we're going to be. I like it, Greg. I like it. Okay, good, good. Look, I know what you're thinking. I'm an older guy, I'm 36. Uh, but uh, I've been I've been working out. Don't worry. I mean, does this look like the body of a 36 year old? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. In fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, my body is a temple. I know that's what you guys preach there. 
And they're not even laughing. I was just about to say, like, you to play, right? <laughs> you know what? Hey, we'll come <laughs> crash our Zoom meetings in the morning. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> Thank you, Larry. That would be funny. All right, it's a jam-packed show on SA Live. They've got something for everyone, everything from magic to monkeys. Take it away, Mike and Jen. Pancakes, parties, painting, even a little bit of pepper. We are going all out today on SA Live for mom, not one, not two, but three ways to make pancakes. Pancake bread pudding, oh, you're gonna love this recipe. The party's moving from your house to your car. We're getting a first look at a one-of-a-kind Cinco de Mayo celebration that you're invited to. Taking the pain out of painting. Struggling with this home project? We got a hack for that. And some cafeteria workers are going above and beyond to make sure no children go hungry. And we're doing the chicken dance. We're getting a taste from a place with amazing chicken to go. How do you do this? <laughs> Sun's out, guns out. We're getting your upper body ready for summer. No gym required. Gather your little herd because the zoo is trying something new. It worked for restaurants. Now the zoo is getting a drive through. We're adding a little magic to your day. We've got a few tricks up our sleeves on this fun Friday. Don't go anywhere. Our brand new SA Live is just minutes away. How'd you do this?